Welcome to this uh, course on statistical mechanics of non-interacting and interacting systems. I am Saurabh Basu from uh, IIT Guwahati. I will be teaching this course. Uh, a very short introduction to the course uh, has already been given and uh, let us start with the basic requirements of thermodynamics. And to begin, uh, let us understand the history because sometimes the history actually tells uh, a lot more than what we expect. Uh, it tells the, uh, the chronological development how uh, this uh, uh, subject came into being and uh, at times it is very useful. Uh, so, basic notions of heat and temperature were established in uh, as early as 1600s. Heat is thought to be associated with the motion of this constituent matter which means that um, the heat is generated because of uh, the motion of the molecules and atoms of uh, say uh, a gas and uh, temperature is the manifestation of these motion. Uh, later about 200 years later uh, Carnot uh, he captured some of the key elements of thermodynamics and uh, he proposed an idealized engine uh, with a maximum efficiency and uh, this uh, efficiency of the engine is coined in terms of heat output and heat input and so on. Little later 1850 Joule uh, through experimentation established that heat is a form of energy and that is what we all know uh, as of now that heat is a form of energy. And around the same time uh, Clausius and Thomson, uh, Thomson is actually more popularly known as Lord Kelvin after he got the knighthood. Uh, he proposed a first and second laws of thermodynamics. These are uh, really important steps in understanding the behavior of uh, physical systems. Uh, the first law, we will see uh, all these laws in great details. Uh, for now, the first law states the conservation of energy and the second law actually talks about uh, the correct direction of the flow of heat. Later, the concept of entropy was put forward uh, in 1860 by Clausius and he said that uh, it is a ratio of heat to temperature and even second law says something very similar to that uh, will come across these. Around the same time, Maxwell derived the distribution of molecular speeds in an ideal gas. Now, there is a very important steps. Um, there are slow moving molecules and there are fast moving molecules and uh, Maxwell actually stated that they, they are distributed um, in a Gaussian sense that is uh, the velocity uh, distribution is Gaussian or is bell shaped and uh, there is a, a minimum value around which most of these molecules are their velocities are distributed whereas very slow and very large speeds are uh, more rare. I mean they are rare to come across. Uh, over the next few years the kinetic theory of gases uh, was uh, developed rapidly and the macroscopic properties of gases in equilibrium was established. This is a very important concept again. Um, we know that the molecules are moving in a gas. So, how is the gas in equilibrium? How do we calculate the equilibrium properties? And um, many things about equilibrium which we will uh, briefly come across are uh, being discussed in this kinetic theory of gases. And in 1872, Boltzmann constructed an equation which correctly describes the time evolution uh, of the properties of a gas. Around the same time, uh, the molecules are thought to be uh, uncorrelated and uh, uncorrelated means that these, these molecules they uh, there is no intermolecular attraction and uh, they are just on their own moving around uh, sort of irrespective of the presence of other molecules. And later these uh, correlation effects have been incorporated uh, and this equation is known as the Boltzmann transport equation and um, uh, this is uh, incorporated in a very nice way through the relaxation time approximation. However, we will not uh, see that soon and um, uh, during uh, mid 1870s Boltzmann realized that the entropy of a gas must be proportional to the logarithm of the number of possible states of the system. Um, this is a, again a very important realization, it is a log times 
the or log of the number of possible states. So, suppose uh, there is just a unique state of a system say for example, a ferromagnet where all the spins are pointing in the same direction. Um, this gives you log of 1 equal to 0 which means that uh, the entropy of uh, a ferromagnetic order or a system is equal to 0 as uh, the, the only possible state of the system is uh, the all the spins are pointing in the same direction. And uh, later it uh, helped him to uh, formulate this idea of ergodicity, we will see ergodicity and um, it sort of uh, replaces uh, the time average of uh, a system by the ensemble average. And um, Gibbs uh, at the beginning of 1900, he introduced the notion of an ensemble and we will see uh, ensemble throughout this course. So, the ensemble denotes collection of many possible states of the system and each assigned with a certain probability. Uh, Gibbs argued that the time evolution of a particular state uh, will result in the state visiting all possible ensembles. So, um, if you think of a classical uh, gas where um, the atoms or the molecules are randomly moving around. So, you construct a large number of ensembles uh, or rather copies of the system by uh, taking the molecules to be distributed differently as the time progresses. And um, uh, one can actually uh, take this or this consider the time uh, average of such a system by taking an average over the ensembles and this is called as a ergodic hypothesis and we will see this shortly. In the early uh, 20s, 1920s, the not much work has been done in thermodynamics because there was a very rapid growth of quantum physics including uh, proposal or uh, rather putting forward the Schrodinger equation, uh, wave particle duality, uncertainty principle, wave nature of light. I mean whether uh, light is a particle or a wave, it actually shows characteristics of both. Uh, indistinguishability of particle and uh, this indistinguishability actually shows up in our uh, statistical mechanics in a big way and uh, the in fact, this uh, helps uh, to remove a paradox which is known as Gibbs paradox that will come across and uh, it has uh, a large bearing on uh, the, uh, the study of statistical physics that we will see. Nevertheless, this progress with second law uh, engines and uh, the applications uh, therein that went of course, uh, went on to develop the thermodynamics and also statistical mechanics. Um, uh, later in 1950s, Shannon and uh, Von Neumann give new perspectives to entropy and uh, thereafter Bennett in 1970s, uh, he did a lot of groundbreaking computational work on thermodynamics and that is how uh, this uh, study of thermodynamics evolved and it gave input to the study of statistical mechanics. So, once again just to remind you that thermodynamics deals with very uh, small number of variables, they are mostly pressure, temperature and volume and maybe the chemical composition of the gas. Now, if you make a measurement of a gas, it gives you certain values of pressure, volume and temperature and, and maybe the chemical composition. Now, what is the internal structure of the gas? How are the atoms and molecules are distributed in various energy levels? That answer thermodynamics cannot give. Statistical mechanics that is how it gives a microscopic description so that we understand that how different particles are distributed in different energy levels so as to give us that pressure or that volume or that temperature that we actually measure in experiments. So, let us uh, look at uh, some of the key points of uh, thermodynamics and uh, they are equilibrium. Uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is when uh, we talk about various things whether we are uh, measuring equilibrium quantities or whether we are making a physical measurement when the system is at equilibrium. Because if the system is evolving uh, with time, uh, then making a measurement now and making a measurement uh, maybe 10 seconds later or 1 hour later or 
3 days later if it gives you different uh, outcomes that that is not a correct measurement we cannot say that that is the properties that we have measured when the system is in equilibrium. There are uh, two uh, main assumptions that we make uh, regarding equilibrium that is the values of the thermodynamic quantities once again pressure, temperature, volume, uh, chemical composition etcetera they remain constant over the time scale of the measurement. And um, uh, in a gas the molecules are in motion as we have said. So, how an equilibrium can be established? So, this according to ergodic hypothesis the time average is replaced by ensemble average and we can still uh, continue talking about equilibrium quantities using this hypothesis, we will we'll come across this. There are two kinds of equilibrium uh, mainly internal equilibrium and absolute equilibrium. Uh, by internal equilibrium what we mean is that uh, none of the properties actually change with time and absolute equilibrium uh, is that the properties are not only constant in time, but are independent of how the system came to equilibrium or how the equilibrium is achieved, it is independent of that. So, uh, we talk about physical properties and uh, by physical properties we mean uh, pressure, volume, temperature or even the chemical composition as I have said many times. Um, uh, as I said that uh, you know uh, there could be also magnetic moment, uh, refractive index etcetera these are also physical quantities uh, they, they correspond to physical properties of a system. Uh, now, uh, not all of these are independent ok. So, they are connected by what is called as a equation of state. Uh, we give an example here uh, which we will see several times during the course of this uh, study of statistical mechanics is the equation of state for an ideal gas which is PV equal to NKT where P is a pressure V is a volume and T is a temperature K with a sub B uh, is called as a Boltzmann constant and N is uh, related to the number of molecules. So, temperature is an important concept in uh, thermodynamics. In fact, the 0th law of thermodynamics is actually about temperature or thermal equilibrium. So, temperature requires of course, a special treatment we understand that because it cannot be expressed in terms of length, mass and time. This LMT uh, most of the physical quantities that we come across can be expressed in terms of uh, LM and T. However, temperature requires a different treatment. Nevertheless, if you um, think that temperature can be converted into energy as Joule had said earlier, uh, then you multiply it by uh, the Boltzmann constant K B and uh, then uh, the energy uh, say for example, can be expressed in terms of length, mass and time. So, in uh, thermodynamics and statistical mechanics temperature is expressed in the absolute scale named after Kelvin. and uh, take a note that it is not degree Kelvin, it is just simply Kelvin. Uh, however, with other scales of temperature uh, that is centigrade and Fahrenheit, we use uh, degree centigrade or degree Fahrenheit. So, uh, the temperature in uh, Kelvin is written as T equal to uh, capital T equal to small t plus 273.16, where T is in Kelvin and this small t is actually in degree centigrade. So, whatever you get in degree centigrade it can be added to uh, or rather 273.16 can be added to that in order to get a the temperature in the Kelvin scale. We talk about systems isolated systems, we will talk about um, uh, various kinds of systems which are either uh, they allow exchange of heat uh, or they do not allow exchange of heat. An isolated system is the one which does not allow exchange of anything. So, it is like a sealed container as you see below and uh, the walls are such that they do not allow exchange of heat and this is called as an adiabatic system ok. So, uh, the pressure, volume, temperature, chemical composition will remain unchanged if you immerse this container in a pool of water. Okay, nothing will change inside uh, of uh, what is inside the container 
and it is purely isolated and it does not interact with the surrounding. However, mostly we come across systems that are um, partially isolated and it is possible to partially isolate the system by attaching a piston at the neck of the container. As you see that this is a piston and uh, if you, so this there is a mechanism like that which is can be pushed in and this gas can be compressed and uh, or it can be expanded like the volume in the left figure is more um, than the volume in the right figure and in fact this uh, is done by pushing this piston below and uh, this is uh, uh, we are changing uh, the volume and by the equation of state we are also changing other parameters in the uh, of the system such as uh, there is a change in pressure, um, the pressure is more on the right figure than in the left figure because pressure is uh, inversely proportional to the volume. And uh, so, uh, a change in temperature of the pool of water will not result in rise in temperature of the gas because uh, these walls that you see, uh, they do not allow exchange of heat. So, we keep the temperature to be constant and uh, change the volume and thereby change the pressure and this is called as a thermally isolated system. So, we have thermally isolated it which means that uh, the temperature does not change, the walls of the container does not exchange heat with the surrounding and that is why when these assembly uh, of this uh, piston inside a, uh, and a gas inside uh, that is when dipped in or immersed in water uh, there is no change in temperature. However, uh, not all walls are adiabatic in nature. There are uh, walls of the container that allows exchange of heat uh, with the surrounding and these are called as the diathermic walls. Okay. Consider two different systems that are uh, maintained at temperatures T1 and T2 and they are uh, separated by diathermic walls uh, and are brought in physical contact. Okay. So, there are two systems, one is in at a temperature T1 and the other is at a temperature T2 and they are brought in contact and these walls actually allows exchange of heat and uh, it is easy to see that each of the system or each of the uh, components will come to a new equilibrium. Uh, at a common temperature T. They cannot uh, maintain different temperatures. Uh, they have to come to a common temperature which is uh, different than T1 and T2 and it is actually in between T1 and T2. So, uh, suppose T1 is greater than T2. So, the common temperature will be lesser than T1 but uh, greater than T2. Now, consider three such systems A, B and C. It is easy to see that if A is in thermal equilibrium with B, and B is in thermal equilibrium with C, then A is in thermal equilibrium with C and this is known as the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Sounds very trivial, but however, in those days when the subject was in the nascent stage and things were uh, developing, even uh, this uh, got a name that is called as the zeroth law of thermodynamics. So, it, it just simply says that if there are number of uh, components or rather number of different systems that are in thermal equilibrium with each uh, uh, one is in thermal equilibrium with the another, then they all are in thermal equilibrium and uh, they maintain a common temperature when they are uh, brought in either physical contact or they are connected by some contact that allows exchange of heat. So, what are the different thermodynamic processes that we come across? There is spontaneous process there is an irreversible process and there is a reversible process. And uh, let us see what a spontaneous process is. A spontaneous process occurs uh, when uh, there is no external intervention. Okay. Uh, there is no uh, external agency that does anything and it happens on its own. For example, if you keep a piece of iron uh, in open air, it uh, gathers rust. Okay and uh, this is uh, this will automatically happen and of course moisture is responsible for that but uh, it just uh, will happen without any external intervention by us 
Um, so gradual uh, cooling of a hot cup of coffee, if you keep a, a cup of coffee for a long time, it will attain the temperature of the room, it will get cooler and this is a process again which is spontaneous. Let us talk about an irreversible process, this is important. Consider a gas to be in an initial state described by this P1, V1 and T1. Okay? The pressure, volume and temperatures have some values which we call as P1, V1 and T1. Now what you do is that you suddenly, that is very quickly or rapidly, you change the volume to V2 uh, by uh, pushing the piston that we have shown. So there is a, a, a gas there and there is a piston that is fitted to and you suddenly push it down or you pull it up does not matter uh, and then wait, wait for the equilibrium to achieve. The system will uh, come to a new equilibrium say the pressure, temperature and volume are given by uh, P2, V2 and T2 as we uh, sort of pressure, volume and temperature they have new acquired new values here. Now you consider uh, the piston to be brought back to its original position such that the volume is V1. So it was V1 earlier, you quickly push it down or pull it up such that the new volume becomes V2 and then you take the piston exactly to where it was such that the volume becomes V1. Now this sudden process involves friction and other dissipative phenomena such as you know which can uh, go up uh, this dissipate as heat making this process irreversible. So this process is irreversible. So the P1 and T1 which were the initial values of pressure and temperature they are never achieved uh, even if you have pulled the volume to this original value which is V1 and this is an irreversible process. So an irreversible process will occur when um, you do it very quickly or you change uh, say uh, one of the parameters very quickly which uh, will involve uh, non-equilibrium uh, processes that is uh, in going from P1, V1, T1 to P2, V2 and T2 there are a lot of uh, non-equilibrium processes that are involved. So even afterwards when you bring it back to uh, V1, the volume back to V1, still the other parameters which are P1 and T1 uh, pressure and temperature they do not come back to the original value. Now what is a, a reversible process? Again uh, consider a gas in the initial state is described by P1, V1 and T1. Now very slowly change the volume to V2. Now this is not rapidly, this is really slowly, pardon me for this uh, typo. So uh, you do this very slowly by slowly pushing or pulling the piston. So at every step the change in internal pressure is same as that of the uh, applied pressure. Now again do the same thing that is uh, bring back the piston so that the original volume is regained or recovered which is V1. So this slow or uh, the quasi static process does not involve any dissipative phenomena and making the process reversible so that you again get back the same pressure and temperature that you started with which are P1 and T1 and this is an example of a reversible process. Let us uh, discuss three laws of thermodynamics namely the first law, the second law and the third law. We uh, start with the first law of thermodynamics and it tells that in the simplest form as we have already seen it states the conservation of energy. Okay. Maybe a more technical version uh, tells you that there exists a function of state, there is an important word or it is also called as a state function. The same thing, U uh, this is called as the internal energy. So the internal energy is the content of energy due to the, uh, you know, the molecular motion etc. So that um, if an amount of energy E is supplied, capital E is supplied to an isolated system, transforming it from one equilibrium state alpha to another equilibrium state beta, then uh, this E is equal to the, the change in the internal energy corresponding to these equilibrium states alpha and beta. 
So, E is equal to u of beta minus u of alpha and this process does not depend upon the way in which E is supplied. What I mean is that this E could be supplied by an electrical circuit or this could be by uh, sort of uh, supplying uh, maybe heat and so on uh, by uh, putting a Bunsen burner. Uh, so, it is independent of how it is supplied the uh, this energy E that is supplied is uh, will cause the state function or the internal energy uh, to be the difference between the two uh, states equilibrium state um, the uh, alpha and beta. Okay. So, irrespective of which path it followed in coming from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state that would not matter in this case. So, the discussion above ascertains that uh, u is a state function also uh, called as a function of state. In a general sense, u may depend upon volume and other thermodynamic parameters. Okay. If a system is not thermally insulated, then heat can flow through the walls of the container and the total energy supplied will now be the sum of the heat supplied to the system and the work performed on the system. Now, uh, the reason that uh, this is marked in red is uh, because of a sign convention that we would discuss later uh, that is this uh, work done on the system and work done by the system. In one case it takes a positive value and uh, in another case it takes a negative value. Now, what we are interested in at this stage is that uh, now this uh, energy that we wrote down earlier is uh, equal to some uh, q plus w uh, where uh, this q is the heat and w is the work. So, even if this quantity does not depend upon how the equilibrium is achieved, we will sh uh, show that that w actually depends upon path that is followed because uh, it is related to uh, the different heat could be actually uh, absorbed or given by the system, I mean given up by the system uh, either it is uh, it is uh, gone into the system or it is uh, uh, left by the system. So, it is uh, uh, you know uh, heat also can be uh, either the system has a larger temperature during the process or the temperature reduces and so on. So, uh, this tells us that the non-exactness of the work done and uh, suppose an ideal gas is compressed at a constant temperature from an initial state alpha to beta as shown below. So, you see that there is a PV diagram and uh, we are showing an equilibrium state alpha here and a beta here. So, it goes in this path and the work done would be given by uh, minus PDV this minus sign will be discussed as I said earlier that uh, the uh, the sign convention that is usually followed in thermodynamics is an important thing, it would be discussed and it is nothing but the PdV where P is a pressure, you can write it with a capital P if you like. So, it is a PdV and it is nothing but um, if you use the equation of state and uh, use this thing as uh, say for example, nRT by uh, V. Uh, then is a dv over v and you get a log of that and because of the minus sign you get a log v alpha by v beta. So, that is the work done if you take the gas from the equilibrium state alpha to an equilibrium state beta by keeping the temperature to be constant because you see here the temperature is constant. Now, if instead of taking it directly from alpha to beta, if you take it through this state gamma and then uh, to alpha to gamma and gamma to beta, then the uh, it is no longer uh, the it is given by this nRT uh, log uh, V alpha by V beta. There are different amount of heat that are extracted by the gas and it is no longer just uh, depend I mean the final state and the initial state and even though internal energy is a property of the system, but the work done. Uh, actually depends on the process. And the convention that follows is that for uh, such processes that depend upon the path, we write it with a, this kind of a delta and the ones that are uh, the, the state functions 
their change is denoted by a full differential. Finally, uh, let us talk about the specific heat. Uh, specific heat is defined as the heat required to raise the temperature of a system by 1 degree. Okay? And uh, we know that it differs uh, when the process is uh, performed or rather this change is performed, heat is uh, given at constant pressure or at constant volume and we are able to define uh, two quantities such as Cv and Cp. And um, in a lot of situations rather particularly in uh, ideal gas, there is a simple relation between Cp and Cv. We will uh, continue with the discussion of second law and uh, then we will do the third law and then we will get on to uh, a more uh, intricate uh, phenomena in uh, thermodynamics and then we will of course uh, go to statistical mechanics. Thank mm -hmm. you.